Well, it's another chapel service, and I am delighted to invite you in to worship with us. My name is Dr. Oscar Williams, and it is a pleasure to be with you. Even though it's virtual, I can feel your participation. I can feel your presence. And most importantly, I can feel the presence of the Almighty God. My cup runneth over. We have been in this for the last couple of weeks. And this third week, we're talking about our cup running over with wisdom, wisdom and knowledge only given to us by the Lord God himself. And so, yes, as we worship, as we customarily and traditionally do to open up our service, I want to invite you to ask God specifically to give you his heart of wisdom, his mind of knowledge, to be open to the point where God fill me and endow me with so much wisdom that it dictates my actions, my words, my speech, and how I interact with others. Yes, we can petition God even in worship for another feeling, not just of his spirit, not just of his word, but of his wisdom. Let's do it, let's worship. Lord, now that we are in the third week of October, we bring attention to the wisdom that you have given us. We know that there is a connection between the Word of God and wisdom in the believer. For the Word of God reveals his plan for us. Therefore, we thank you that you have filled us up with your Word, and because of that, you have granted us wisdom. Lord, we also know that wisdom is the principal thing. So we are to get wisdom and with all thy getting, get an understanding. Lord, as we seek to grow in wisdom, help us to flee ignorance and offense and rather to get an understanding in all that we do. And Lord, we ask that you continue to give us the grace to put into practice sound judgment, even as we seek your face and learn your ways. Now we thank you for wisdom, for your word, and the Holy Spirit coming into our lives, coming alive and being active to serve as a roadmap and a compass for us. It is in your name that we pray, in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap your hands. Teach a new song real quick. Say it, sir. Who spoke creation and knit it together? His mercy endured forever. Uh -huh. Who hung the stars in all of their splendor? His mercy endured forever. Yes, Lord. Uh -huh. Who formed the earth and set it in motion? His mercy Talk about Jesus uh, who built the mountains and filled up the ocean. His mercy endured forever. Come on, uh, that's why we saved him. He's not like He's the King of Glory. He's the King of Glory. Say, oh, hell, now clap your hands in the room. Clap your hands in the room. Clap your hands in the room. Everybody say, oh, hell, clap your hands in the room. Lift your voice in the room. Give him praise in the room. Come on, so we say, what an honor. What an honor. What a privilege. 
to be in your presence, Lord. Oh, the wonder of your goodness. Your goodness. There's nobody like you, Lord. Come on. What an honor. What a privilege to stand in your courts.
Now, let us bring our empty souls, our thirsty minds and hearts, to the wellspring who is God, and allow for him to fill us once again with his presence. Pray with me. Dear Lord, we confess that without you, we have no sound direction on how to make the right decisions for our lives. Confusion and anxiety begin to overtake our hearts when we try to figure out everything on our own. But you, O oh God, you know our ends from our beginning as our creator. Every day of our lives was recorded in your book before one of them had even taken place, according to Psalm 139 and 16. So in order for us to receive the fullness of the wisdom that we need to navigate our life journeys, we recognize that we must seek you. We must seek you through prayer and meditation on scripture and adhere intently to the promptings and guidance of the Holy Spirit that you have placed within us to teach us, to counsel and guide us, and to bring to our remembrance all that you have spoken to us. Your word says that if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. So help us, dear God, to always recognize the importance and value of asking you for wisdom and not following earthly wisdom that does not descend from above. Your word also says in James 3 that that, that kind of wisdom is earthly and sensual and demonic. So help us to fill ourselves with and to follow the divine wisdom that can only come from you, our all-knowing God. Your divine wisdom is pure, peaceable, full of mercy, and yields good fruit in our lives. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Old Testament reading is coming from Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1-5. through 5. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall obtain unto wise counsels. Our New Testament reading is coming from Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Good day, students. Welcome to chapel. JDS. Listen, I'm so glad you tuned in. Jake's Divinity School has designed a chapel to bring greater intimacy as well as education to provide inspirational fuel to build you up. Today we're going to be talking about Psalm 23. You know, it's a famous psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, David says, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. He says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He says, thou anointest my head with oil. But today we're going to focus on this last portion. My cup runs over. Psalm 23 culminates in this profound expression, my cup runs over. The poet here has reached a crescendo, uh, an opium, if you will. He can mount no higher. The psalmist seeks to express the blessedness of his condition in having the Lord as his shepherd. The reader can feel the psalmist's inadequacy in expressing all that Yahweh has done. The writer is conscious of the inadequacy of the human language. 
to fully express divine benevolence. In other words, David has no other expression but to say, my cup runs over. His psalm cannot reach the height of the great argument, nor can his soul, though enlarged with gratitude, been able to compass the immeasurable gifts of grace. Therefore, in holy wonder, at lavish superfluities of Yahweh's mercy, David cries, my cup runs over. In this short but most expressive sentence, David seems to say, not only have I enough, but I've got more than enough. Isn't that what we need? Isn't that what we want? I possess not only that I am capable of containing, but I inherit an excess of joy and love and peace and abundance, a redundancy of blessing and extravagance of favor, a, pro a prodigality of love. My cup runs over. Today, we're going to explore the most important content that has filled this cup to the point of running over. This is the cup of wisdom. The cup is full of wisdom. The fullness of wisdom is on the inside of this cup. Now, what is wisdom? Wisdom is what to do with information. Wisdom is when God gives you an answer to a problem or a situation that you would not otherwise know how to handle. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Who are you? Where are you going? And what has God called you to do or to be? Because for David, this is the most crucial thing he ever wrestled with. Wisdom. How to attack Goliath. Wisdom. How to deal with the rejection of his father. You remember that David was rejected by his father. About 1 Samuel chapter number 16. First chapter number... Uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 17, he kills Goliath, but this is after the rejection of his father. Jesse forgot his father's name was Jesse. Jesse forgot that he even had an eighth son. S the prophet Samuel comes to the house to anoint the king with oil to find a king. David is forgotten on the backside of the desert, a shepherd himself tending to sheep. His father forgot that he had a son. The oil would not flow because it wasn't for his older brothers. It was for him. So when I ask you, who are you? Where are you going? And what does God call you to do or to be? I want to deal with three basic things. I want to deal with your call, your conflict, and your character. The call of God comes loud in everything you face. If you're listening to me right now, you face some immeasurable things in your childhood, some great challenges. But I'm telling you that you are chosen to change the atmosphere, but you cannot do it without wisdom. When David says my cup runs over, he's saying I'm so blessed that there's enough on the inside of this cup to sustain me for the rest of my life. And oftentimes we don't hear the call of God spiritually or even naturally because we're going through so many different things. I call this the conflict. The call of God is often interrupted by the conflict of your current situation. The conflict is the battle between your flesh and your spirit. The flesh and the spirit, they constantly war one against another. So even though that you know that God is calling you to do something greater or better or to be somebody that you've never even seen before, your call is littered with conflict. How you handle the conflict will determine whether or not you rise to the full height of your potential. All of us have this great potential, but we don't often perform at the level of our potential because in between potential and performance is pain. How you handle the pain, how you navigate circumstances and situations will determine whether or not you receive the call and rise to the occasion by overcoming the conflict in the middle of your life. In this psalm, David is really expressing, though I face death, God's got me. Though I seem like I'm a, a, a sheep who sometimes have been led astray by things that I shouldn't have been led astray by, God is still my shepherd. Those are amazing all by itself. The protection between death, he restores my soul. To have your soul restored is amazing. He leads me beside still waters. That means that I have peace. He says, my, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. It's even comfort during times of bereavement. But the opium of this text is about the cup. The star of this psalm is the cup. 
Inside of the cup are so many different things. I want to focus on the wisdom portion of it. If you're listening to me right now, you're facing something that you're not quite sure how to handle. Whether great, whether small, whether medium, whether tall, you're facing something where you're going to have to have what I call, I call it God job security. God will always allow you to face a situation that you need to seek him for his help and his guidance. The Bible says in Proverbs 4 and 7 that wisdom is the principal thing. In other words, the great principle of this psalm is about the wisdom on the inside of the cup. Now, when he says my cup runs over, this means that God's going to bless you so much that you're going to have every answer you need to the questions and the problems in which you face. So we talked about the call, which means you've been called. Everything you've gone through in your life is an indication that the call of God is on you to be greater, to be better, to reach your highest height and your deeper depths. God is calling you. Now, it'd be different if your friend were calling you. It'd be different if your manager were calling you. It'd be different if your clients are calling you. But God, the Almighty, is calling you. God, the Omnipotent One. That means He's all-powerful. God, the Omniscient One. That means He's all-knowing. God, who is omnipresent, which means He's everywhere at the same time, all the time, anytime. The powerful God of the universe is calling you. Now, why would God need you? He needs you because he's got a cup of blessings that he wants to overflow to somebody. It might as well be you. When David says, my cup runs over, before that, he says, you prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. In other words, you're going to be able to eat and dine while people who, that don't even like you or seek your demise will watch you be blessed. But the real blessing in the cup running over is that you don't even have to drink from the cup. You're going to be drinking from the saucer because there's going to be an overflowing abundance of wisdom and prosperity. Know that you're called. Number two, the conflict. The conflict is no match for where you're going. I reckon that these suffer the sufferings of this present world are not even worthy to be compared with the glory of God that shall be revealed. You just need to know how to navigate the situation you're facing right now. I mean the secret situation. I mean the thing that's really poignant on the inside of you. I mean the thing that's really bothering you, the thing that you're really having to persevere through, the trial, the tribulation, the pain, the suffering, the setback, the questions, the answers, the sleepless nights. The answer to these questions are in receiving the cup of wisdom that God has given you. Now, you, you know that you're called. You know you're going to have conflict. This last portion of wisdom from the cup is your character. The character is the integrity that you need. Integrity is everything. The Bible says in Colossians 1 and 16, let the word of God or the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. This psalm is telling you that wisdom is going to overflow when you read the text. That's why I'm so glad you tuned on, because if you tuned on, you love reading God's word. If you tuned on, you love to worship God. If you tuned on and you like to really read the psalms, you're in love with the master. And the master is going to give you the fullness of wisdom. The word of God produces wisdom in every believer. This wisdom comes because the Bible says that the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So even if you don't think you have it all together, the Bible says he'll make wise the simple. He's going to give wisdom to those of us who need it, for those of us who don't know how to handle each and every situation. I want to close by talking to you about your cup. What's in your cup? Is your cup full of bitterness? Is your cup full of rage? Is your cup full of anger? Is your cup full of disappointment? Is your cup full of wondering? Is your cup full of prayer? Is your cup full of wanting a healing? Is your cup full of broken relationships? 
Is your cup full, filled or littered with poverty and not the riches to be hungry and thirsty for righteousness? What is your cup filled with today? Because in order for you to receive the cup that David's talking about, when God says, my, when he says, the Lord has blessed me so much that I'm going to eat in the presence of my enemies, that my cup runs over, what he's trying to get you to see is that in order for you to receive this cup of wisdom, blessings, and grace, you're going to have to pour what you've put in the cup out. If you're listening to me right now, I'm pretty sure you've got something in your spirit that needs to exit. So let's first allow everything that we've taken on, received, or spoken, let's push it out. Let's push it out. In about 1000 BC, when David wrote this, he had to push out the rejection of his father. He had to push out lust and anger. David was a real character. David faced so many different trials and tribulations, but his one thing that he held fast to is that the Lord was going to give him a cup that was going to forever run over. Do you receive that? Do you believe that your bills will be paid from this cup? Do you believe that you're going to have witty inventions, ideas, concepts, and ideologies from this cup? Do you believe that you get real estate from this cup? I do. Do you believe that there'll be prosperity in marriages and great relationships from this cup? I do. I believe that your whole health and sound mind and body and being renewed and strengthened, reinvigorated, recharged and a rebirthing and a fire from God, it's all in this cup. This cup represents you receiving everything that God gave you. Now it's up to you from here to receive not only the cup of blessings, but allow the blessings to flow over because God has given you wisdom. Once again, wisdom is what to do with knowledge. To know wisdom and instruction, the Bible says. To perceive the words of understanding. The moment you're able to understand your situation, know exactly what to do with the knowledge around you, know exactly how to handle the situations in which you face, in which you face, this means that you're now drinking from the excess, the overflow of what's on the inside of this cup. God seeks to bless you. He seeks to mature you. He seeks for you to reach your highest potential, your greatest heights, and your deepest steps. For some of you, you're gonna graduate. Yes, you are, receive it. For some of you, you're gonna start the business. Yes, receive it. For many of you, the relationship will be mended with your relatives and your friends. Just receive it. For many of you, you're going to receive your wildest dreams. Your wildest dreams are going to be, come true because you're going to say, wait a minute, I don't know how to do it now, but God has given me wisdom to know how to handle my situation. I hope that blessed you today. I want you to have an amazing year, fellow students. I look forward to seeing you in the near future. God bless. Father, your word clearly outlines that Solomon was wise and he was wise because he prayed for wisdom. Father, that same grace today, we're praying over our friends and our family who are watching this chapel service. Father, allow us to be full of wisdom. We seek wisdom today. We go after wisdom today. We intercede for wisdom today. Father, we are passionately asking that you continue to make us wise. Father, for without wisdom, we make crazy mistakes. And without wisdom, we don't know where to go. So, Father, today, give us the gift of wisdom. We thank you for these things. We thank you for wisdom, which leads to understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, family. Man, I am so excited about the opportunity to hear about one of the fundamental things that we all need in order for us to be successful in this Christian journey, wisdom. And then to hear how our lives can be filled with this wisdom, oh my God. I'm so ready to release us all so that we can go and practice the wisdom that God has given to us today and the wisdom that he gives to us every day. Let's pray. 
Father, I pray for my brother and my sister, and I confer a blessing upon them, Father, that their hearts and their minds would be open to receive the wisdom that you are willing and able to impart to us daily. I pray that you would help us not to live this life, make decisions, make choices, uh, operate in things and behaviors without fully being filled with your wisdom. I pray that your wisdom will come to us and that our hearts would be open to receive it, our ears would be open to hear it, our eyes would be open to see it, and our lives would be enriched by it. It is in the name of Jesus that we confer this blessing upon your people. Amen. And thank God. All right, my brother and my sister, let's go forth in peace, excited to operate in the wisdom of God that will help us to become successful in this Christian journey. Until we meet again, peace to you.